Hello, Ian here from Dark Blues Workshop. Welcome back to another video. This one I'm painting Dumbledore. Okay, so Professor Dumbledore, he came with the original all-in deal when Nightwolves released the game and uh, he's fairly rare now. Well, really rare. And uh, I think I snapped his bond. I don't know if it was before painting or during, but I've repaired it since. And uh, he's looking good, I think. So, hope you enjoy it. Let's get on with it. All right, so I primed him using grey. And I give him a blast from above with uh, white. So we're going to be starting with Wolfveen grey. And I'll be highlighting up using uh, slash grey. So let's get the base coat on. Right, for those of you that know my Batman stuff, this is my favourite grey. Not favourite grey combination. Oh, I love it because there's a, a slight touch of purple in there. For some reason, I just can't paint regular greys and, and blacks. Um, I've got to have a bit of colour in it. That's why my when I do black, I use um, really dark greens. A scale seventy-five do a lovely paint set called the the Shades of Doom. And I use that one for all my blacks. Well, most of my blacks. Alright, so I'm going to carry on with the rest of this guy in the, uh, the Warp Fiend Grey and we'll uh, come back on its drop. Also, a couple of coats of the Warp Fiend Grey on now. Um, I'm going to go on to the skin now. I'm um, using... Cadian Flash Tone. Um, I'm doing it slightly different to... Uh, that's a couple of coats of the Warp Fiend Grey on. Um, as you probably noticed, I've uh, broken his wand. I'm having slight palpitations here, thinking I'm never going to find it, but I'll have to have a look on the floor in a minute. Um, right, so let's get on with the skin. Uh, just using Citadel's Cadian Flesh. Uh, that one there. I'm going to try and keep some of the tutorials um, well I'm going to try and keep some of the colours for this, you know, the same colours but um, for the likes of Dobby and Creature I've changed the skin tones slightly using a different flesh tone anyway I think this is my standard uh, flesh colour that I use for most things really See the colours starting to come through on the uh, the warp fiend grey. Um, that was I, th I'm not sure, I think I might have been three thin coats, and you can really start to see the purpley tones in it. It's lovely. Um, right, we'll leave that dry um, before giving it a wash. Okay, so I did two coats of the flesh, and I've just started using um, Reichland flesh shade now. Straight out of the pot and put any water in it or anything. And um oh sorry. I just can't believe I broke the wand. Um I'm getting slightly nervous because I can't find it. I've had a look on the floor. I'm gonna have to get my optivisor out and just <laughs> scan across the carpet till I find it. So I'm just trying to pull it around the edge of where the skin meets the beard and in the eye sockets and around the mouth. Uh, just make sure it goes into the, uh, the fingers too. And that'll take a while to dry now. Okay, 
Okay, so it's 50 50 all clean grey and slash grey. And it's fairly thin. I want to keep it thin because it's. Uh, I want to build up the highlights. You know, the more times I go over the same area, you know, the more intense the colour becomes. I'm just staying on top of the creases now. I'm not going into the shadows. He's in the side of my brush there on the big folds. Just catch the edges. This will probably take about two or three coats just to build it up. Okay, so the, the beard and hair I'm using is grey. Um, the idea is that I'm going to build that up to white then. Uh, I think this is going to take a couple of coats. Especially around the face where that wash has been. This is the second coat by the way. get underneath by the robes as well. Okay. So for the inner robes I've done a couple of coats of uh, administratum grey mixed with a little bit of this hero blue. It's a nice uh, pale greeny blue, but I wanted to desaturate it a bit. The the blue on its own was a bit too saturated, and I figured I just wanted a, a lighter grey than his, his outer robes anyway. So that's what we went with there. And now we're going to put a shade on the uh, the outer robes. So I've made a mix of, it's a couple of washes that I've got, the Vallejo washes. Um, I didn't want a pure black wash, so I've mixed it with a grey wash. And I threw a little bit of um, purple wash in there as well. Because we were using the, the Warp Fiend grey. I wasn't planning on doing a, a wash because I wanted to see what it looked like just building up from the, the greys to white but I figured it, it needed a bit more shade so here they are so I'm just letting that settle into the creases I might take a, another go but I'll do that off camera I don't want it to really pool anywhere, I just want it to change the tone. So I'll get rid of the pores. Right, so I'm redoing the layers with uh, Warp Fiend Grey now. And exactly the same as before, just picking out the folds. Um, I forgot to mention I'm using a size 1 uh, brush. I really should uh, keep saying what size brush I'm using. Um, Windsor & Newton Series 7 I like to use. Um, Unless I'm doing base coats or something like that, I'll use uh, like a cheap synthetic brush that you, know, you get from your art shops. So yeah, a lot cheaper. But if I need a fine point, these are the ones I like to use. Okay, 
Okay, so I'll carry on. I see I've done one coat on the back. It'll take another couple of coats just to bring it back to where it was. But leaving, you know, leaving the shadows in there. I've added a little bit of um, slanash grey to the walking grey mix. And uh, I'm just highlighting the top of the robes now. Yeah, the top of the creases. I've added a bit more slanash grey to the mix. Um, I'm still on my number one brush. I'm staying in the middle of the highlighted areas now. This is the reason why you need a brush with a, a nice a nice point on it so you can really get that control. And just think about which folds will be lighter than others and how far up you're highlighting and so I'm going to highlight from about there up now. Just to make it more interesting really. And pick out your folds. I've given the, the hat another coat of that wash, the, you know, the, the black and the purple wash, because I quite like it actually. So, um, I'm going to carry on highlighting now. As I say, I'm staying in a well, staying with the highlights in the highlight area in the folds. But um, yeah, just highlighting a smaller and smaller area. Final highlight now, uh, slash grey with a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of white in it. I'm just picking off the edges of the rope. I'm not going to do that bit there because I think that might be in more shadow so I'll stay at the top and I'll pick that bit down here. Look. Only stark edges. Just using the edge of my brush there to pick out the edge of my ropes. Okay. Moving on to the skin then. Um, I've decided to not even attempt the eyes because they are, well, they're tiny and at this scale you're not going to see them. So all I'm going to do is put um, an extra shadow in there. So I've got an old version of a, a flesh colour by Citadel, it's called Dark Flesh. Um, I would have thought something around the likes of Mournfang Brown and if you add a little bit of flesh to that maybe you get something similar but um, yeah what I'm gonna do is I get it on a I've got a size zero brush now I'm just gonna re-emphasize some features like that line there and the eye socket. I'll just do one side because it's really awkward with the camera and I'm going down the side of the nose. And I'll go down here in the, uh, the hollow of the cheek and just follow the beard line and the moustache and the hairline. So we're just re-establishing that dark shadow 
before we actually start on the skin tones themselves what I'm going to be using is my usual uh, KTN flesh tone and Kisler flesh and maybe a little bit of uh, flayed one flesh for the highlights So starting off with the Cadian. I've already made a start on the uh, as you're all looking at it, the left hand side. I'm going in on the right hand side now. As I say I'm using a size zero brush. So I think I was talking to somebody the other day about areas to highlight and you want that T section there, the, the, the eyebrows and the nose. You can pick out that nostril, go for it. The eyebrow, the cheekbone there. And I want that line that runs down there. I may take another coat. So this is the Kislev flesh highlight. The cheekbone, the line. You can see it's taken about 10 strokes for it to uh, appear. I'm staying on this side. And I'm going to the top of the forehead. Got a bit extreme here for this scale, but I'll make the effort. I'll do the same on the other side now. A little bit on there. The next stage is flayed one flesh and I've added that to the previous mix so it's just getting lighter and lighter and I'm picking out the edge of the cheekbone there on the top of the forehead just underneath the, the, uh, the hat and the beak and the top of his fingers there Uh, I was feeling brave so I did the eyes um, probably look shocking when you zoom in but just felt uh, as though I could probably have a go with this brush because it's, it's got a lovely point on it. So the flayed one flesh highlight now uh, just on that bit of the cheek there I just want to pick out that line again and I'll go around the corner on the, uh, the nose onto the nostrils and that strip across the top there. Don't necessarily need to be down by the eyebrows. And if you notice up by the hairline sometimes it's, it looks a bit lighter. So that's what I was trying to achieve there. Um, I'll do the other side off camera but I think that's the, that's the skin done. On a closer inspection I saw it looked a little bit rough around the, the cheek so what I've done I've made um, a glaze super thin glaze of the, uh, the original base coat I'm just going over the transitions from the highlights to the shadows just to smooth things out a bit and I'm going in between the eyebrows as well just to darken that bit again it's really subtle but a couple of coats of that and it should tie it all together smooth out transitions and it'll look a lot better so hair next so what i usually do with hair is um just layer on now uh, the original coat if you remember was administratum gray so i've got that again and i've added a little bit of white to it uh, 
Okay, so I've added more white to the grey. I've done that side, so I'm going to do this side now. And just pick out every curl. You can speed things up and just use the side of your brush and just go down. Um, but I say, if you want more control, you can just use the point of your brush and pick everything out. Um, when you probably go on to the next layer, you may want to consider highlighting the just the top half, maybe. Just leaving the bottom half as it is now. So we'll try another coat. So the final highlight now is just pure white. And I'm not going all the way down. I'm going about halfway down. But I'm picking out every every strand. I've already done the front. The beauty of this is if you make a mistake, you've got um, you don't have to mess about and do a wash or anything. You can just go and say if I did white in that bit there, all I'd have to do is get the administratum grey and just fill that void again so you get the shadow back. Um, you don't have to mess about with a wash or anything. This uh, makes things a lot easier. Um, I think I'll just highlight the wand and I'll do something with a hat. You don't need to, to see what I do with that. And uh, I think we're almost there. So the final stages were adding um, administratum grey and white, quite a lot of white into it. And I just um, stroked the brush across to pick out the details on the lapels there and use the side of the brush to run up there. A um, bit of white on the buttons and here as well and then a bit of white up this bit here up those bits. and picked out the edges of the sleeves so yeah he's done um, next thing now is to take some decent pictures for the thumbnail of the video and uh, I'll put him on a base and then we'll do the wrap up there we go, the big man is done. Um, yeah, a bit of a drama with the one, but we managed to sort it in the end. And uh, yeah, he turned out quite nicely, actually. I think he's uh, quite good on that. So, um, yeah, if you get stuck, if you can't, don't understand anything, get in touch in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you, especially if you want to see anything in the future. You know, uh, just let me know and I'll try and help you out. So uh, I'll sign off now and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.